citizens speak out. People in cities across the world continue to find their voice in demanding basic freedoms and human rights, including participation in representative democracies in countries such as Bahrain, Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast, Egypt, Italy, Libya, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, Syria, the United Arab Emirates, the United States and Yemen. Israeli and Palestinian Hamas officials separately made announcements on Sunday that they were each willing to end bilateral attacks as long as the other party complied as well. The National Organization for Human Rights in Syria reported that 28 people were killed on Friday, April 8th, with four more who lost their lives Sunday as security forces fired live ammunition on peaceful protesters in various major cities. The Syrian government claims its own forces were fired upon by armed groups, resulting in 19 deaths, and states the government will deal forcefully with armed groups. Speaking with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad on Sunday, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon conveyed his deep disturbance by the crisis, stating that violence from all sides should be halted. As he emphasized the duty of the government to protect civilians and respect their basic rights, he called for President al-Assad to release all those currently detained and to begin an inclusive dialogue on comprehensive government reforms. International organization Human Rights Watch meanwhile urged the United Arab Emirates to reveal the whereabouts of Ahmed Mansour, a blogger arrested Friday who had been among a group of 133 academics, former government officials, journalists and activists petitioning the president in early March for direct elections. CNN reported that two other members of the same group were also detained on Saturday and that the United Arab Emirates government has not responded to inquiries regarding the location of the three men. In Yemen, as tens of thousands of people continued protests on Sunday, calling for President Saleh to step down, violent intervention from government forces resulted in one person being killed and 14 others injured with gunshot wounds, with many more treated for tear gas inhalation. Even residents who have not been part of the protests are calling for international assistance from those countries that provide money and arms to Yemen, saying that they are being affected by the tear gas fired on protesters, which is an unusually severe form that has been found to cause paralysis and even death. In Afghanistan, citizens' anger has been growing about the presence of U.S.-led foreign troops as well as the burning of a Quran by a U.S. pastor in late March, with protests escalating in recent days. According to Press TV, U.S.-led Swedish and Finnish troops left the northern Afghan province of Samangan on Monday after hundreds of residents persistently demanded their departure. As reported by Press TV, thousands of Italians nationwide protested Saturday over living conditions that include high unemployment rates and low retirement pensions, demanding more government attention for families, workers and students. In Chicago, Illinois, USA, over 5,000 union members from four states gathered to protest against the erosion of collective bargaining rights among unions, with many attendees pledging that they would continue demonstrations as long as the measures undermining workers' rights are carried out by the government. A Salubait news agency and Press TV report that Saudi troops assisted the Bahraini forces in raising five mosques to the ground over the past few days. Saudi citizens protested for the second day in a row on Saturday against the presence of their government's troops in Bahrain. Press TV reports that peaceful Bahraini protesters continue to experience brutal crackdowns by Bahraini, Saudi, Kuwaiti and United Arab Emirates forces. On Monday, Bahraini officials fired 30 doctors and 150 health ministry workers accused of supporting the protesters, while 16 Lebanese nationals were expelled from the country after a religious leader in Lebanon expressed moral and political support for the protest movement. Also on Monday, two senior Bahraini clerics were arrested. That same day, Iranian university students gathered in front of the Saudi embassy in Tehran to protest the Saudi military presence in Bahrain and the killing of Bahraini citizens. Their calls were echoed by many merchants in the city who closed their shops for several hours to protest the military violence against pro-democracy demonstrators in Bahrain, Yemen and Libya. In Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast, intense conflict continued between supporters of the internationally recognized President Alassane Ouattara and incumbent President Laurent Gbagbo, who has refused calls from the United Nations to step down. On Sunday, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon ordered the organization's peacekeepers to use all necessary means to halt Mr. Gbagbo from using heavy weapons against his own co-citizens as well as the peacekeepers. On Monday, UN and French troops, along with supporters of President Ouattara, were able to 
safely detain Mr. Gbagbo, who appeared on television after he surrendered, calling for an end to the fighting and saying that he wished for a rapid resuming of people's lives. President Ouattara addressed the nation and similarly urged fellow citizens to refrain from acts of reprisal or violence. He went on to state that in accordance with the law, an investigation into Mr. Gbagbo's case would be prepared, while the rights of Mr. Gbagbo, his family and supporters would be respected. A delegation of African Union leaders has been in Libya to mediate a ceasefire. On Sunday, leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi accepted their proposal of a roadmap to peace, which includes calls for an immediate ceasefire, protection of foreign nationals, and the urgent delivery of humanitarian aid. The African Union delegation traveled to meet in Benghazi, Libya, on Monday with leaders of the Revolutionary's Interim Transitional National Council to discuss the proposal. Meanwhile, the release of two Al Jazeera journalists has been confirmed after four were detained about one month ago. All four had been released earlier but then were rearrested. Al Jazeera reported Monday that Mauritanian correspondent Ahmad Val Oud Eden had been freed as confirmed by the African Union delegation visiting Tripoli on Sunday, while Tunisian journalist Lofti Al Masudi was released last week following 27 days of detention. It saddens us to know of the cherished lives lost, but we are glad to see some glimpses of the dawn of peace in conflicted regions, and we pray for a halting of all turmoil as people in every nation decide to live side by side in shared freedom, dignity, and peace. In sorrowful response to these unfortunate world events, Supreme Master Ching Hai lovingly reminds, If the road is wrong, the more we walk on it, the more we go wrong. Any leaders who committed harm to others should stop at once, sincerely repent to God, and act to redeem their mistaken deeds. Then they will be pardoned. Even if humans can't forgive, heaven will.